attending. This is our fourth conference, our fourth annual conference of the M Health at Duke conference. Uh, the theme of our conference, Exploring Mobile and Digital Technology in a New Era of Precision Medicine and Population Health. We're really excited about today's conference. We hope that you uh, walk out of the conference today with a sort of a renewed interest and excitement about your work in M Health. We also hope that you are able to mix and mingle and get to know the speakers, get to know one another, so that you might be able to network and, and gain some more uh, contacts that you can rely upon in this, in this uh, M Health space. So we have a, we have a, a stellar li lineup today, and so we're very excited about that. But first, I'd like to go through a few logistics. If you haven't got the conference app, it's a YAP app, so it's myyap.us and it's slash x96gr5. You have to pay extra if you want some fancy name at the end, so we just, <laughs> it's a freebie. Uh, but it has more information about the speaker's bios and uh, it also has some information about the posters. You can also tweet from there, but you can also tweet on your own outside of the app using these, uh, these hashtags. We'll have a short break from between 10.05 and 10.20, and then we'll have lunch. Lunch is provided, so please stick around for lunch. Use it as an opportunity to see the posters and also talk with one another. At 4, the conference will end at around 3 o'clock, and at 4 o'clock, we're having a Triangle M Health Consortium is organizing a post-conference meetup at Local 22. Local 22 is the restaurant bar that's in, next to Perizod or on er in Irwin Tower off of Main Street, so 2200 West Main Street. So if you would like to join after to keep the conversation going, please join us at Local 22 for a few, uh, a few, uh, a few minutes of, of, of discussion, and, and, and we hope that you will be able to do that. So I would like to give special thanks to a couple of people here that made this day possible. Erica Levine, she uh, tirelessly organized this conference, so I'd like to thank her and Hallie Davis Penders, who helped. <laughs> See, they're, they're not even here now, they're, they're, they're left, so no. They keep things moving uh, smooth throughout the day, and they made this day possible, so without, it was not without their help that we couldn't have done this. I would also like to thank the sage advice of our faculty steering committee. We had several faculty across the campus that have served as uh, advisors for our group, for M Health at Duke. Joe McLernan, Lavanya Vasudevan, Ryan Shaw, Sophia Smith, Gary Bennett. We also had a student representative the last couple of years, uh, Vin Vijeth Angar, his name got cut off there. But he has been very helpful in mobilizing students in this space as well. So we're thankful for all our uh, steering committee members and help, helping us plan these activities that we do throughout the year. We also want to thank the sponsors for this event. We typically ask other centers or other departments to help with in-kind support for the conference or else tangible support where some provide tangible support that we can use for uh, paying for things like the lunches and the venue and stuff like that. So Duke Health MedEx program, the Duke Global Health Institute, Duke School of Nursing, Masters of Management of Clinical Informatics, the Addiction Division, Community and Family Medicine Department, and the Department of Medicine. So we thank our sponsors for making this day possible as well. M Health at Duke really was founded four years ago. This is our fourth year. We put the app, a grant application in five years ago, and uh, it was a small internal grant from the School of Medicine. And we, our mission has been and is to accelerate research on the use of sensors and mobile technology to advance the delivery of healthcare through improved patient provider communication and collaborative healthcare management. And we do this by providing a venue for education and leadership development in the M Health space. We also hope to serve as an incubator for M Health research by providing a forum for discussing new ideas and identifying resources and serving to build capacity for novel M Health technologies. And over the five, four years, we've had the honor to, we have had the, the honor to, to, to host several notable speakers. 
Our first conference, we hosted Alain Lubrique from Johns Hopkins and Health Initiative. We also hosted as a, uh, as a guest lecturer, Dr. Santosh Kumar, who's at the University of Mem Memphis and director of the NIH MD2K initiative. Two years ago, we hosted David Moore from the Center for Behavioral Intervention Technologies at Northwestern University. And last year, we hosted Dr. Kevin Patrick from UCSD and Bobby Jefferson from the Futures Group. And today, we're thrilled to be hosting Donna Sprutz Metz and Bill Riley. And we'll tell, tell you a little bit more about, about that in a second. As well, we are also hosting Aaron Hitt from NC State, our local uh, guest speaker. We are, um, the way in which we've facilitated incubation of ideas has been through a lot of different tasks and, and activities, but one thing that we're quite proud of that's been a good, of, of good success over the last couple of years has been the incubator, has been the Shark Tank competition. And last year and this year, we hosted a Shark Tank competition. Teams could submit their ideas, and we had over, we had about 17 submissions this year, and I think we chose five uh, to compete in the incubator or the uh, Shark Tank competition. And it is what it sounds like you have a, a judges that have some experts uh, that tear you apart. No, they don't really tear you apart. We call it sharks with soft teeth. So you know, we, they give them a chance to present, and they get feedback on their ideas, and a winner is selected based on those winners who's, who've shown great progress in their idea, their M Health idea and innovation. So the theme of today's conference is mobile and digital technology in the new era of precision medicine and population health. And according to Wikipedia, precision medicine is about tailoring of medical treatments to the individual characteristic of each patient. And really, the rise in precision medicine is born out of the omics. The omics are the genomics, the metabolomics, the microbiomics, and the like. And it's now possible to generate large amounts of data biological systems data on a single individual with the hope that these data will be useful to better understand the course of one's disease or help in planning a, a tailored treatment. But we also have the mobile omics. We have wearable and environmental sensors that allow the generation of individual time-varying data across a number of health indicators. All of these pieces of data collected from mobile phones, from uh, devices like step count counters uh, for physical activity, heart rate monitors, blood pressure, weight, weight mo monitors, sleep. We can even, even look at one's digital footprint, where one's been on the web to make predictions about one's health, location tracking, health records, and as I mentioned, environmental sensors. All of these data together can be called to, to better understand the health of the individual and alert providers, potentially, or to provide individuals with meaningful feedback about their health. And from a population-based approach, these data collected from multiple individuals could be used to address the status of large patient panels or large segments of society in which we identify groups at the highest risk. So the hope is that mobile, mobile omics of many individuals can be used to target improving health services or generating effective preventive interventions. But, you know, with all these data, we have to be wary of bad data, right? Because some data that we receive will just be wrong. We cannot have a weight increase of 50 pounds in a one-week period. So we need to be able to be wary of these bad data that we're collecting with all this other data. And we also have to be wary of imprecise data, right? So, you know, we, we don't want uh, our sleep records to be inaccurate when we're planning to use those for meaningful purposes. So with all of this, we have you know, data problems. And um, it's going to be imperative that we have data scientists who can look at all of these data to, to learn about where the problems are and discover where the meaningful data are in order to provide actionable solutions. But now is the time 
It's ripe to start thinking about using all of these omics data, this personal data. So 10, 10 years ago, it, took, it would cost $22 million to sequence the human genome. Today, it costs between $1,000 and $5,000. Two years, it took two years to do that task, and today it takes one day. Ten years ago, less than 2% of the population owned a smartphone, and today, more than 60% own smartphones. And 10 years ago, about 25% of electronic, 25% uh, of health systems were using electronic health records, and today more than 90% are. And we've seen an increase in computing power by 16-fold. So now is the time to start thinking about using these data that we're collecting for, for health purposes. And the mobile technology is really ripe right now to begin thinking about this mobile omics in, in service of precision medicine and population health. You know, some of these earlier phones that took 30 minutes, or that had 30 minutes of talk time would not be, be very useful in, in today's mobile health world. But we've seen some progress over the years. And just within the last 10 years or six, 15 years, maybe we, um, Dr. Riley can tell you about his work with feature phones or phones before we had uh, smartphone capacities. But the technology today is, is, is far enough advanced that we can begin using these phones for health purposes. And really the mobile phone is, is our hub. It connects our devices and, and sends this information to the cloud where analytics can be performed and we can receive information back from it and we can also share that information with providers and others that might be able to help. So the hope is that smartphones will lead to smarter healthcare, and the uh, mobile phone really can be used to change when, where, and how healthcare is provided. It can provide potentially just-in-time adaptive interventions, and hopefully Donna will be able to share a little bit about the JEDI work that she's done, and if not, ask her. We can also use mobile phones to increase access to care, lower the cost of healthcare, improve health outcomes, and really exciting to me as an epidemiologist, allow for the collection of granular real-time data on social, behavioral, and environmental factors that can be used to understand the determinants of health. So it's with these, so it's with, so as we enter this new era of precision medicine and population health, the data that uh, derived from mobile devices along with other data will be crucial to studies where we can look at the associations between non-randomized exposures informed by serially collected devices, mobile devices, and the associations that these have with outcomes, health outcomes. At the same time, we might be able to use, to improve causal studies, studies in which we might be able to use the power of, of remote monitoring to improve our understanding of how specific treatments affect health outcomes in real time. So mobile technology and the ability to connect with individuals is changing the way we think about these research problems and these research processes. And it potentially liberates the need for these lab-based studies, or it adds to or complements our lab-based work, and allows for individuals to become more active participants in the research as well, because they're able to share their own data. So for today, we hope you, uh, oh, and I should also say that you know, Durham is a great place for this activity, the city of medicine. Uh, we're ranked the top 20 cities for our technology industry. We have a highly skilled labor pool in the Dur Durham area and in the Triangle, and we have major universities that contribute to intellectual culture here in technology. So this is a hub as well as the mobile phone. So thank you, and we hope you enjoy the conference today and get to know one another. This, at, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our keynote speaker. So Dr. Riley is associate, is Dr. Riley is the director of the NIH Office of Behavioral and Social Science Research and the associate director of NIH for Behavioral and Social Science. Before his current uh, appointment, he served as the health science administrator and deputy director in the division of, of AIDS and health behavior research at the National Institutes of Mental Health, a program director at the National, health, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and chief of the science of Research and Technology Branch in the Division of Cancer Control and Population Sciences at NCI. He also served, he also, let's see, he also served as a, 
as a professional lecturer in the schools of public health uh, at George Washington University, and we are honored to have to have you here today, Dr. Riley, as our opening keynote speaker for the fourth annual Duke M Health at Duke conference. And please welcome Dr. Riley.